Welcome to vlog 106, take three. Oh man, I really shouldn't vlog um, after work because it's taking longer than I expected. But today we're going to talk about NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Month. Um, well, I've done NaNoWriMo, or I've attempted NaNoWriMo, um, the goal for anybody who missed my previous vlogs on this topic, um, I, every, pretty much every November since 2015, um, I think there was only one or two out of six, um, that I, I, I tried it, and I've never made it. The goal of NaNoWriMo is to write a novel in a month. Specifically, you have to write a minimum of 50,000 to be considered a winner. Um, the the fact that you won, like the prize is, you know, just a little certificate that you can print out and, you know, the knowledge that you, excuse me, that you um, have to do a lot of editing now if you want it to be good. And, well, I've never, not once, have I ever completed NaNoWriMo. And what's interesting is that some years I actually have written a lot the months before. But for whatever reason, November, I suddenly stopped. And actually on top of that, um, it seems like specifically when I start NaNoWriMo, I lose all momentum. Now this year, <sighs> I've been moving a lot in my job. And what I mean by that is um, I work in different locations and I, I'm on my third location in like, you know, a month and a half. And it's rough for me because I'm the kind of person who gets creative. Uh, I like the way I like to say it is I, I'm at the, my most creative when the ground stops moving. And so when, um, when you have to learn how to work in different environments, even if you're doing the same job, um, especially if your work is very environment based, it's, it's, it's rough. And then on top of that, to, to, to also be creative. And then on top of that, to be somebody like me who really struggles to be at least writing. I can manage drawing and stuff like that. Um, but to, to, to have writing routine, especially in order to get through NaNoWriMo, you gotta be consistent. Um, while you're moving, it's, <laughs> you know, it's difficulty upon difficulty upon difficulty. Now, um, I said I was working in, okay, now I look really blue. I don't know if it's better or worse. I think this hue is a little more natural. <sighs> to, um... Oh yeah, so basically, uh, the first two weeks of November, I was getting used to the second location because I had just switched. And I was working a lot of um, extra hours, which... Um, I can look at my stub, but it didn't end up working out to being that much uh, um, extra money, to be honest. It was almost not worth it, but um, I guess it wasn't worth it financially, but I don't regret doing it because um, my employer was my, my boss, not my employer, but my boss was um they, they were having a lot of issues they needed people to cover the gaps and i was willing to you know work, get the extra hours and um, make that money and i'm sure it helped because um i was spending a little too much during that period of time as well um and on top of that i just bought a new microphone cost a 100 bucks so um 
the money definitely went somewhere. Sometimes, you know, it might have gone to somewhere like junk food, but, or, uh, you know, drinks. But, uh, I mean, you know, like pop. <laughs> um, I don't think I've bought alcohol in a long time. Um, the point is, I was adjusting in the first two weeks of NaNoWriMo, and it shows because um, on the third, I have my stats right here. Um, on the third, I wrote a good amount. Like I, 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 I was late to the punch, I missed the first day. On the second day, I only wrote 300. On the third though, I wrote 800. Now, if you do the math, uh, you know, 50,000 words divided by 30 or 31 days, I don't remember. Um, it's 30 days in November. You have to write a little more than a thousand per day. But 850 is close. So I could have built that momentum, but I didn't. And what happened was basically after the, uh, after the 8th, which was the first week. Um, I guess that was that week. It was less and less and less. And I think I was working, you know, more extra hours. Um, I also had a giant gap where I went on. I had to not a road trip for fun, but a road trip to go get more stuff from um, my grandmother's place where I was living. So then. <laughs> <laughs> then I moved to this location and uh, the writing almost stopped. I actually, I have been contributing to it here and there, kind of like a bird pecking every, it looks like every, like every four days, like I'll have three days where I don't write anything. And then on the fourth day, I'll write something. Um, but it's, it's a little bit less than a hundred every time. And actually those weren't even on the project. Like I decided I was going to change the project, um, but it's it's a mess. And actually, the project is a mess. It was the Soul and Sabrinum, which was the story of um, how Chloe Rye's mother and father met. Um, Chloe Rye being the youngest of, I think, seven. Um, okay. Six. <sighs> she's the youngest of six. Even though she's the fifth prince of the soul, and the twins count as, uh, both of them count as third. Um, yeah. So, I'm officially throwing in the towel with NaNoWriMo. Um, again. And you know what, this year especially, I don't know, I don't remember what happened last, in previous years. I've, I've always had something going on in November, if only, um, you know, a university uh, midterms and uh, actually often the end of November is when you start looking into exams because there's only like a week or two of uh, December that that might have classes, and then it's final exams. So I've never had a a good uh, November where things were not shifting in my life since 2015 when I graduated uh, high school. So, you know, that's just how it is. Um, what am I going to do with the Solon Sovereignum? The, the project I was working on, the book I was working on. <sighs> well, I'm not going to abandon it because it is an important part of an important character's story. And actually, um, the king himself is one of the oldest characters. Um, a lot of these stories are about characters who existed as drawings. Um, in some cases, even as ideas before drawings. 
um, for years before they ever got penned to paper. Um, I actually also tried doing a comic once. I only got like two pages in. Um, but um, Solon King is, his name is Rai. And for a long, long time, I didn't know what, uh, I didn't know what to call him. He was just the Solon King for years and years and years. And then, um, I think before I graduated high school, maybe a year or two, so 2014, 2015, um, that sort of time, um, I had a character in my first D and D campaign, and actually I can look this up because um, if you go to not down, not my website, but uh, my old website. Yeah, I have an old website that I had in high school, and I have not um, I've not edited it since. It says here. Twenty seventeen. Um, yeah. So back last time I edited it, this I was reading, and I think I was actually read like not audiobook reading, which is what I do a lot nowadays, um, and for a long time actually because it takes you know it takes more effort to read. But um, I was reading Rising Sun, which by Michael Crichton, very interesting book very gives you a very unique look at japan um through multiple perspectives and it's also murder mystery so that's always fun or not a, i don't think it's a i don't know if it's a murder mystery or like um uh they're investigating a theft of some very valuable business uh technology and i was reading spice and wolf volume 14 which apparently was much better than volumes 12 and 13. Let's see later. Um, but I have a tab, Dawn Gale, where I talk about um, the different nationalities that I had. And apparently I have a whole sheet. Wow, okay, there's actually some good, uh, useful stuff here. Um, History of D&D campaigns. That's what I was looking for. So, my first D&D campaign was called... Um, the Goo Campaign. And it started in late July 2014, apparently. And so, there was a character, a non-player character named Millie, Millie Rye. Um, a name I just came up with off the top of my head. Turns out she is the cousin of Chloe... And I decided that, okay, if I have, if Millie Rye has a last name, Chloe, the son, or the son, the, the daughter of the king, probably they, they, is also Rye. Like, and yeah, it's actually, um, they're connect, like, Millie Rye's father and Chloe's father are brothers. So, they're both Rye. And that meant that she was Chloe Rye. And that meant that the king was King Rye. Now I decided, I think it was just last year I decided. And so last year is six years later. Um, the uh, I decided that that was his name. Like, his, his name is Rye. That's not his last name, that's his name. Which means that Chloe Rye is Chloe, daughter of Rye. You know? Um, because it turns out the last names weren't really a thing for a very long time. You were, you know, son of someone, or daughter of someone, or, um, you know, Erasmus of Rotterdam. Right uh, of the city you're from, right? So it was either your city, your 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 parent, and actually usually your father, um, and 
There was another one. Oh, your occupation. That's why a lot of last names are occupations, like Taylor, um, Smith, right? Um, probably, you know, if you speak another language, think of the, especially, it seems to be especially a European thing, but think of last names of people you know. Uh, for example, you know, um, in Polish, Krawczyk. It's, um, it's kind of like, um, Taylor, um, or Taylor's assistant or, or, or apprentice Taylor or something like this. Um, so, you know, uh, oh, we went over 15 minutes. So that means I'll have to upload it to my computer and, or upload it from my computer, but transfer it to my computer. Um, it's getting late. So we're going to finish off, but the point is, Nano's not, not working out. Will I continue working on the Solon Sovrinum now? Like, during Nano? Will I use the last five days and try and push? You know what? I might, I might. Um, you know, I, I have, I have some plans for the weekend, but I've got not including today which it was the 24th now it's the 25th because i get home around midnight from my job um so not including yesterday the 24th and i'm not writing after this i'm gonna shower and uh do the dishes a little bit and then go to bed but you got the 25th 6th 7th 8th 9th 30th that's six days. <sighs> oh, except I can't write on the 30th because if I get home at midnight, that means Nano's already over because it's the first. So it's five days. Will I hit the, the number? <laughs> 10,000 words per day? Honestly, maybe I could do it. But it'd probably be bad for my health. Um, it would eat up time I want to use for other things. Um, I probably, like, I have more time in the morning generally. Um, but I, I do other stuff in the morning. You know, like, get ready for work. Um, eat. So, I, you know, if I had to, you know, if there, if there was, like, a cash prize of $10,000, <laughs> you know, I would do it. Um... But there's nothing of the sort. So I'm not, it's not worth it. Will I take the time to push, you know, maybe a few more chapters? Maybe a chapter a day? I can try. Actually, yeah, I'll try that. I'll make, I'll do a chapter, I'll, I'll try to do a chapter a day and give me one day of we win. Um, I think that's it. Now, <laughs> regarding writing, um, War and Peace is a very long novel. Um, I think there's like 15 books in it. It's, if you have, I, yeah, it's not on my shelf. Um, but the, the actual book itself is huge. It's like 1,400 pages. It's 1,400 pages. Um, it's like a brick. That's actually what a lot of War and Peace fans call it, is their brick. Um, and they, they, you know, they enjoy lugging it around and kind of showing off that they're reading such a huge book. Um, which, all right. But, um... Honestly, the first six books are kind of, but after book seven, it it's actually interesting, um, especially if you like the realist style, which I do. Um, I really like realism uh, as a genre, as a literary genre. I like to uh, pretend that I'm realistic. Um, but 
the thing about War and Peace is that I'm, there's actually a few things I'm learning from it. And I have this in my note, but I'm currently recording with the phone that my note is on. And I did email my notes to myself so I can put them on my new phone, but I don't want to rummage through emails now. I want to go to bed. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll shower in the morning. Yeah. Um, but the point is, there are a few things. One, there was this very interesting scene. Um, the first third of War and Peace is, you know, the, the running up of the, of the war getting between Napoleon and Russia getting ready to happen. And then, um, in, um, then it stops, like, the, they declare peace, and I was like, huh, they declared peace? And I had to look, because I, I wasn't reading it, I was listening to it while, while I was working, right? And I, I was like, what the heck? So I, how much is left in this book? And it's like, mm, you know, more than half. And so, yeah, the, the war between Napoleon and Russia, apparently, I don't know if they, um, if they reached, um, I, I get, like, apparently Tolstoy did a lot of good research, so he, they must have reached, there must have been a short piece, but they're fighting it. Um, and there's a scene where... A peasant, you know, the the servant of one of the main characters, because all the main characters are, are Russian aristocrats, because I guess because Tolstoy himself was a Russian aristocrat. Um, for somebody who cared for the peasants so much, and you see this in some of his books, there's also frustrations with the peasants um, in both of his famous novels, War and Peace and Anna Karenina, but for somebody who you know purports to care about peasants to the point where um he wanted to um give up his wealth and and live a simple life himself uh he also uh he made a lot of schools for peasants like he, he established actual schools places of learning for the peasants and but for somebody who purports to care about peasants so much, in in both of the novels I've read, which have many, many main characters, main characters, like multiple perspective characters, I think War and Peace has three or four, you know, um, none of them are peasants. So, the... the I have a sort of love-hate relationship with Tolstoy. I used to really, really like him. You know, I admired his, his caring for the people. But then I found out, you know, later in life, um, uh, you know, t tension. His wife, and this is, I think I went off about this in another vlog, but especially with, um, but, you know, she, she she was not ready to give up her aristocratic lifestyle. And his books was a major source of income for them because he got really, really famous in Russia. Like, really famous in Russia. Um, and he wanted to sign away the rights. Like, he wanted to give up the rights and put them in the public domain for anybody to use. And that meant that they would stop receiving nearly as much income because anybody could copy it and sell it as their own um and so she was obviously against that but he, he they made an agreement that all his older works which were his more popular works they would she would keep and his everything he wrote after a certain point was his to uh get you know put give away basically but Basically, uh, the way he end his life ended was bad, in my opinion. Basically, he tensions with his wife was so high. I think he found his his wife 
Like, his wife and him used to read each other's diaries. Also, um... Hmm, this is what... Tolstoy... Wife. Sophia Tolstoy, 1862, is when she was born. Oh no, 1862 was when he was born. Are you ready for this? She was born 18... Oh no. Okay, this is starting to frustrate me. Um, Countess Sofia Andre Andreevna Tolstoy Tolstaya. Born in 1844 and died 1919, age 675. Leo Tolstoy was born in 1828. This means, if we do some basic math, that there was 16, I think, years, I think, um, between them. Um, so he was born in 1828, so 30 is two years, and then, um, 10 more years to get to, uh, 40, and then to get to 44 is four, so Four plus two plus ten is sixteen. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's a huge age gap, and so there, I guess there was a generational gap, um, and so apparently things started great between them, and slowly got worse and worse and worse as they aged. <laughs> but um, what ended up happening was, and is they used to read each other's diaries, but eventually, as they started to drift apart. Yeah, he kept two diaries. He kept one for her to read, and he hid one away. And what happened was, I think he woke up one night in the middle of the night, and he found his wife going through papers, or maybe reading the di the second diary, the secret one, or something. And he was like, this is the last straw. And he left. And he left the house. And he actually told his daughter, like, I'm leaving. He was very close with what his, I think it was his youngest daughter. There was a younger son, but he, he died uh, when he was like eight or nine years old. Um, so he told her, I'm leaving. And, you know, she recounts this because we actually have her on video because, you know, a child of Tolstoy is going to be living into the time when cameras, video cameras are available. Um, which is, you know, it's fascinating. Um, you might, you know, there, there are people, there are probably people living today who knew her or maybe, you know, who knew somebody who knew her and then she knew Tolstoy. That's only four and he lived 150 years ago and he lived in the 1800s. Um, anyway. Uh, so she recounts like she didn't understand what, what he meant that he was going but she quickly realized he left um, and he was going to go he was going to go somewhere but he didn't make it um, he stopped at uh, I think the first train station. He stopped somewhere nearby. Uh, he went on the train, right? He stopped somewhere nearby, and um, he was dying. And he, you know, there was enough time to get all of his family there. And, but he did die. And so basically, you know, the lesson to learn from this is, if you run away from your wife, you die. 
And the worst part of it is that, and I know I talked about this before, but it's really disappointing to me. But the worst part of this is that he thought that to see his wife when he was on the verge of death, you know, his whole family gathered around, all his, like, I think he had, like, 10 or 18 or something kids. I can check since I have the Wikipedia page open. Um, but, like, to be on your dying, on your deathbed, and not want to see your wife, your wife, of, you know, of decades. You know, they were married for maybe 20, 30, probably 40, 50 years, you know? Um, actually, yeah, they were married in 1862, and he died in 1910. That's, that's 48 years. So to have a relationship of 48 years and think that seeing this woman is going to stress you so much that you're going to die something wrong here and in fact i recently put in my instagram story you should follow me on instagram daniel l triumph i had the extra l just because daniel triumph is often taken because it's daniel and triumph means to win um rabbi chaim vital one of the great kabbalists said a man's soul is judged in the next world according to how he treated his wife and so that's why i'm being especially harsh on him um especially harsh and of course what does this mean um this is in the beginning of shari kedusha i saw it in the parish of the sefer called olam hamidos the main idea was a person can fake how he is to the outside world but to a spouse you are with all the time there's no faking your true character also a person may be afraid to lose a friend if they act badly around them so they can you know they can act good when they're around their friends but one spouse is committed and therefore less likely to leave. Uh, oh, so since, you, you know, you might be afraid of disappointing a friend because um, they might leave, your spouse is less likely to leave than a friend. Um, so, so you'll be more relaxed about them you might not treat them as well as you treat a friend for this reason is what he's basically saying here the basic gist is that the true measure of what your true um character traits are is how you are around your spouse um this guy says his teacher uh yitzhak greenblatt a talmud of rav reuven lector is a uh, is very big on the concept of the obligation of a person to deal with their acrius after big things. I don't know what acrius means. Um, surely there's no more direct responsibility given to a person than his wife or husband, of course. There's probably a good reason why it, it, the saying is about specifically the wife, and the reason is because typically um in in a, if a marriage is having issues it's the uh it's usually the husband's fault and you might say well what do you mean um you know this is the statistics women initiate 70 percent of divorces yeah but does that mean she was the problem or that she felt that there was no other solution um you know nowadays you know, women can be problems too, but I actually, I heard from a, uh, a video I watched of a, um, a marriage counselor that he said in all of the the people he counseled, um, both the ones that he was able to help and the ones that ended in divorce, all of them, 100% of the time he said the man was the problem. And um, so, you know, maybe maybe he was exaggerating or maybe he just accidentally found or you know only relationships where the man was the problem um but honestly i think just a little bit of you know looking at actual existing long-term relationships hopefully marriages but 
nowadays people don't seem to like to get married so much, um, which, you know, that's not good. Uh, you should make things official. Acrius. Acrius. Um... Charged with responsibility to be accountable. So, obligation of a person to deal with their accountability after bigger things. Um, okay, yeah. So, are you an accountable husband or wife? Um, oh, yeah. So, do, do I agree with this marriage counselor that that, that men are typically the, the problem in uh, marriage? I'm going to say yeah. Is it 100% of the time? I'm going to say no. Um, you know, I did know somebody who uh, had divorced parents, and the dad was kind of sketchy, but the mom was on drugs. So he, the, the, the father ended up getting custody, which is very rare in, in Canada, and probably a lot of other Western nations. The woman always gets custody of the child um, in a divorce. The child is with the woman the mother but in this case you know <laughs> it's good to know that the courts aren't completely insane that uh they end up with the um the mother even if there's something horribly wrong um but the point is uh, i would be i would argue to say probably 70 or more percent that uh if there's an issue in marriage it's 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 the men um, not to say that women don't cause problems, but that's one thing to say, right? Oh, of course women cause problems. Okay, great, yeah. Um, but just, just, just listen to how this sounds, right? Husbands cause problems. Okay, I guess. Wives cause problems. I don't know, you know, it, uh, it doesn't sound, <laughs> you know, I know that's a very, very weak proof, um, but you feel free to look at the statistics. I'm sure somebody's written or investigated this, um, you know, so far, as far as numbers go, I only have the divorce statistic, which is 70% women, um, but again, we don't know why. And then I have the, uh, the experience of one counselor who's helped probably you know tens of people maybe maybe 100 or 200 um regardless regardless NaNoWriMo is five days over I'm gonna try and write four chapters minimum before the 30th before the end of the 30th um Soul and Sobrinum I'm gonna continue working on Soul and Steady and go back to writing the Soul and Prince because that novel needs some love. I've been working on it for years. Um, oh yeah, so it used to guess um, how long will it take you to, to finish this at your current pace. And I got like March 2022, which is like five months. <laughs> now it's like, mm. and then no, I was like, you know what, that's not too bad. Um, Welcome to part two of vlog. Um, I don't remember which vlog this is. 106. For whatever reason, my phone, my Samsung, when it's recording, once it gets to around the 38 minute mark, it splits the video up. It, it's like, no video can be more than four gigabytes big, which is stupid. And what I've done in the past is I go into a video editor and I put them together and I wait an hour for them to render. But today I'm just going to split it up. <laughs> Crappy, choppy, uh, break in the middle and everything. But this one's, this part's going to be real short. And I'm going to see if my new phone does that, because if it does not, 
longer vlogs are going to be on this one from now on. But, <sighs> what's up, cat? What do you think? What was I talking about? NaNoWriMo. Um, yeah, it said I'm going to be done in March. Okay, that's not too bad. That's five months. Um, I wrote my first book in three months, but it was shorter than 50,000 words. And NaNo is 50,000. It was only 40 or 38,000. Um, but, you know, I think The Great Gatsby is around that length, too. And that's an American classic, so. But as far as um, this one now, I'm going to check out the stats here. At this rate, I'll be done April 5th, 2023, which is crazy. <sighs> I added a whole extra year um, this month just because I've been struggling so much. And so, to be honest, I don't think my routine is going to level up for another two weeks. And I'm not going to be super comfortable for probably another two months. And so my progress is not going to be so great. But you know what? In, I think, July, there is Camp NaNoWriMo. Let me see all my... Ah, oh, the NaNo has saved all my projects. So, in... 2015, I simply called it Dawn Gale, and um, unfortunately, I don't have this, I don't know where this manuscript is, um, you know, the laptop I was typing it up on high school, when I was in high school, is long gone, um, the files I might, I might have, I don't know, but I might have them. Um, but where they are, I don't know. I have a zip folder of um, old laptop files. And I'm opening it right now. Yeah, this is stuff from university. So it's... Um, that's the wrong laptop, right? It'll be a whole adventure to try and uh, to try and see if I have those files kicking out somewhere. I'm not going to try to do it now, but it was twenty eight thousand words, and Camp NaNoWriMo was in April. 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 That doesn't sound right. No, it's July. April, I guess it changes, because um, I tried to do Camp NaNoWriMo apparently in July for another story called um, The Young Immortals, and that was a mess. I'm almost certain I don't have that manuscript either, but it was horrible anyway, so uh, I'm... Almost happy I don't have it. Then um, I started a NaNoWriMo in 2015. Um, November, I guess, 2015. And I didn't write a single word. And then 2018. So 16 and 17 I didn't. But 2018? Mm, in, I wrote 497 words and then uh, Camp NaNoWriMo 2020 which was a year ago in July I wrote 1200 words yeah it's it's been you know actually kind of like the first time I made it but that was because it was part of my creative writing class in high school and then that summer I guess I tried to do it again 
and I wrote apparently 13,000 words, which is not bad. Um, and then that November I tried, like I made a profile, but I didn't write anything. And I know, I'm pretty sure I didn't write anything at all because Soul and Legends was just an idea. I think I planned, I think I wrote some plans for it though. It was um, Yaska and Jin. Um, and then, um, the Sullen Prince chapter 16 plus was, that would have been cheap. <laughs> Cause you're supposed to write it brand new, but I didn't want to, I wanted to keep writing my book, but I didn't, I wrote 497 words. And then the Sullen Prince novella too, which was... 1300 words so I maybe I wrote a chapter uh, that was for Camp NaNoWriMo though so that was allowed and then the Solon of Rhinum 2400 words and so you know what if you take off those first two where I started at 30,000 I dropped to 13,000 um, and then I went zero 500 that's a lot more than zero and then 1200 that's you know twice as much as 500 and then 2400 that's all you know that's twice as much as 1200 so maybe um this is exponential growth how long will it take for me to get to um 50,000 how many years at this trend will it take before I calculate it so 2400 times 2 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 5 years I'll be at 7600 you Probably, you can't see the number, but it's there. So, maybe I'll keep failing at NaNoWriMo. Um, and probably next Camp NaNoWriMo, I will just continue my novel. <laughs> because Camp NaNoWriMo's rules are more loose. Anyway, thanks for watching. Do I have anything else I want to say? Um, starting next week, I'm going to have a uh, reliable and specific... Uh, route at work So that'll be That'll be good. I can start settling into things. So it won't be two weeks I, Like I, I I'm finishing my second week at the workplace, but I was trained in other locations at this location Other runs you could say right And so starting next week, I'll actually be starting my official run on my own so two weeks from then, everything will settle. So that'll be, you know, December 13th. We'll see how it goes. And if I end up, you know, when December starts, I'm going to hopefully remember NaNoWriMo's over, and I'll tell you if I ended up writing the four goal chapters. And, um, yeah, that's that. Also, regarding, I don't know if I talked about my budget, but I made up a rough budget. And it's all right. I'm even with my student loan payments. I'm, you know, over two hundred dollars in the green. That's unallocated funds, which will probably go into like a savings account. Um, and I know that I'm overspending in certain areas, so I can lower that and save even more, and or pay down my loans or whatever. Anyway. <sighs> we'll see how things go. I'm going to need more time for all this stuff, for the budget to settle, for my mind to settle. And um, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. And next time, I won't go so long if it's late, and I'll try to do it in the morning more often. That way I can use this phone. Because when I record with this phone and, um, and it's dark, like... It looks really dark in this one. Like, absurdly dark.
yeah, it wants to use flash. I was gonna try and take a picture and show you the picture of the picture, but um, it's not happening. Anyway, I'll see you later. This is, you know, this is 50 minutes into take three, and the first two takes collectively were around 13 minutes. So I've been doing this for an hour. I wasn't planning to do it for an hour. I'm planning to do it for 15 minutes or something. Sucks. All right. Good night. But no, I was like, yeah.